What's your first name? My first name is Lucy. My name is Harry. Richard. Andrew. Lillian. My name is Maxwell. How do you spell it? L-U-C-Y. H-A-R-R-Y. R-I-C-H-A-R-D. A-N-D-R-E-W. L-I-L-I-A-N. M-A-X-W-E-L-L. -L. Where are you from? I'm from London. Um, I'm from Herefordshire, which is an area next to Wales. I'm from Edinburgh, in Scotland. From Oxford. Originally Edinburgh, but now I live in Oxford. I'm from Oxford. How old are you? I'm 29 years old. I'm 33. I'm 34. 46. 53. 34 years old, as of yesterday. What's your job? I'm a journalist. I'm a manager of the clothes shop. Uh, I'm a restaurateur. I own a restaurant. I work in a car factory. I'm a shop assistant. Are you married or single? I'm married. I'm engaged. <laughs> I'm single. Separated. Married. What's your wife's job? She's a teacher. What's your sister's job? As a hairdresser. My sister is a teacher in Bristol. What's your mother's job? She's a nurse. What's your husband's job? He's an actor. There are a lot of famous directors, musicians, writers, and actors in the Coppola family. Francis Ford Coppola is a writer and a director. He is the director of the film Apocalypse Now. He has five Oscars for the films Patton, the Godfather, and The Godfather Two. His father was a musician called Carmine. His mother was an actress called Italia. Carmine's music for The Godfather won an Oscar.
Francis's sister, Talia, is an actress. His brother, Auguste, is a professor. Francis's wife is called Eleanor. She's a documentary film director. Francis and Eleanor's home is in California, USA. Francis and Eleanor's daughter is called Sophia, and their son is called Roman. Sophia is a writer, a director, and an actor. She's in seven of her father's films. Sophia has an Oscar for her film, Lost in Translation. Her home is in Paris, France. Sophia's brother, Roman, is a director and writer too. Nicolas Cage is Francis's nephew. His father is Auguste Coppola. Nicolas Cage is an actor and has an Oscar for the film Leaving Las Vegas. Nicolas Cage's cousin is the actor, writer and musician Jason Schwartzman. Jason's mother is Francis's sister, Talia. And there are many more members of the Coppola family too. Francis Ford Coppola is a writer and a director. He is the director of the film Apocalypse Now. He has five Oscars for the films Patton, The Godfather, and The Godfather Two. Francis's sister, Talia, is an actress. Sophia is a writer, a director, and an actor. She's in seven of her father's films. What's your nationality? Uh, I'm Polish. 
I'm Spanish. I'm Welsh. British. I'm Scottish. I'm Dutch. Uh, French. What's the capital of your country? Uh, the capital of my country is Warsaw. Madrid. It's Cardiff. London. Edinburgh. Amsterdam. Uh, Paris. Do you speak any other languages? Um, Polish is my first language, but uh, I can also speak English and Russian. Uh, I speak a little bit of Italian and English. Yes, I do. I speak English and I speak Polish. I speak a little bit of Italian and I speak some Welsh. I speak German and French and a bit of Dutch. Um, I speak a little Italian. Obviously my mother tongue, Dutch. No, French and English. What time do you get up? Uh, today I got up at 11 a.m. and I normally get up at 8.30. Normally about half past seven. I get up at 7.30. I get up at 5.35 in the morning. Oh, it depends. Um, this morning I got up at eight o'clock. What do you do in the morning? I get up, have breakfast, get dressed and uh, get, go to work. The most important thing is that I get to the train station on time. So I get up very quickly, have a shower, get dressed, eat some breakfast and then go. I have a shower, then I have breakfast and then I get dressed to go to work. I brush my teeth, make a cup of tea, make breakfast and then catch the bus to work. Um, shower, brush my teeth, usually have breakfast sometimes, the usual things. What do you do after work? Uh, occasionally I play sport for a touch football or a netball team, but generally I come home and relax. I try to do some sports uh, to try and keep fit. Uh, I like cooking, so I cook myself a meal in the evening, uh, and I like reading too. After work, I come home, uh, usually watch television, and then have dinner. After work, I catch the bus home, I write for an hour, I make supper and watch television, or go out and listen to music. Tokyo is the capital of Japan. Tokyo is on an island called Honshu. Japan's four main islands are Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu and Shinkoku. of Japan is the yen and the main language is Japanese. About 127 million people live in Japan and about 12 million people live in Tokyo. Tokyo is a very busy and crowded city.
millions of people work in offices in Tokyo. People usually travel to their offices in Tokyo by train. They don't often drive. In the morning and in the evening, train stations are always full. Every day, over three million people travel to Shinjuku Station. There are 16 platforms and over 200 exits at the station. People often work very long days in Japan. Ueno Park in Tokyo is a great place to have a break from work. People don't have long holidays in Japan, but they celebrate special days. People often visit a temple on special days. This is Sensoji Temple in the middle of Tokyo. sometimes wear traditional clothes, called kimonos, to the temple. Temples in Japan are full at New Year. People celebrate the New Year from the first to the 3rd of January in Japan. People pray for good luck at the temple. In March and April, Japanese people often go to parks to celebrate the start of spring. They go to see the flowers on the cherry trees. This festival is called Hanami, About 127 million people live in Japan, and about 12 million people live in Tokyo. People often visit a temple on special days. This is Sensoji Temple in the middle of Tokyo. People celebrate the New Year from the 1st to the 3rd of January in Japan.
People pray for good luck at the temple. Have you got any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I've got one younger brother, one older sister. I do, I have one brother called Josh. I've got one younger sister. Yes, I have one brother, he's younger than me, uh, he's 31, and he lives in Belgium right now. I do, I have two brothers. Have you got any children? No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I don't. No. <laughs> no. No, I don't have any children. Have you got a pet? No. <laughs> I do. I have one cat called Oscar. No. <laughs> uh, no. I used to have a hamster, but it died. Yes, I do. I have two dogs and a horse. What do you eat for breakfast? I usually eat um, cornflakes and have a glass of orange juice. For breakfast, I have bread and honey or jam and coffee. I normally eat cornflakes or some other sort of cereal. Sometimes, if I have time, I might make myself some porridge. I love, love, love muesli and yogurt and fruit. For breakfast, I usually eat toast with butter and marmite. Um, sometimes I eat cereal with milk and sugar. I have uh, usually two slices of toast and marmalade. Um, usually crumpets and jam. What's your favourite food? Uh, my favourite food's lasagna. I think my favourite food is cheese. Nice, good, strong cheese. Oh, my favourite food is probably sushi. My favourite food is possibly muesli and yoghurt, but if not, steak and vegetables. My favourite food is roast lamb. Favourite food, probably fish. Um, I'm a big fan of pizza and pasta, Italian food. Is there any food you hate? I really don't like fried foods. Um, there's food I'm not very good at eating, like um, spicy food, like food from India. I really don't like celery, it's disgusting. Uh, I had a New Year's resolution a few years ago to try new food, and so from then on I've eaten every kind of food. I don't like tomatoes. Nothing. I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms. I don't really like mushrooms, no. You can eat food from all around the world in the United Kingdom. the country's favourite dish is curry. There are over 9,000 curry restaurants in the UK. And Brick Lane has got some of the best curry restaurants in the country. Brick Lane is a street in East London.
Over 100,000 people in this area come from Bangladesh in South Asia. The area is called Banglatown. There are a lot of signs in Bengali and many shops sell clothing and food from Bangladesh and India. There's also a big mosque called the Brick Lane Great Mosque. People from the Bengali community own over 50% of the curry restaurants in the UK. And every year, people come to Banglatown from all over the UK to celebrate the Bengali New Year at the Baishaki Mela. is a family event. There's a parade. singing and dancing. There's a lot of delicious food and snacks. There's a lot of fish, vegetables, lentils and spices in Bengali food. People usually eat rice with their meal. Usually there isn't much meat in the dishes. Often there isn't any pork or alcohol because many Bengali people are Muslim. At the Baishaki Mela, the whole community can celebrate Bengali culture and enjoy its delicious food. There are over 9,000 curry restaurants in the UK. People from the Bengali community own over 50% of the curry restaurants in the UK. The Mela is a family event.
people usually eat rice with their meal. Usually, there isn't much meat in the dishes. What do you do in your free time? In my free time, I like to read. I like jogging. I like spending time with my friends. And I like cooking. I play squash and tennis, and I enjoy cycling. Um, I paint, and I sing, um, and I draw, um, and I see my friends. Um, a garden. Play with my children, supervise them, try to uh, help them with their schoolwork and stuff like that. And if there's any spare time after that, play golf. I love sailing, skiing, bicycling. Uh, I do a lot of juggling and I actually play guitar um, as well. Well, on my free time, usually what I like to do is read some novels. Uh, I don't know, like English literature, French literature. Do you like playing computer games? I do very much like playing computer games, yes. No, no, not at all. I love playing computer games, though I don't have that much time to play them nowadays. Do you like swimming? I quite like swimming. I don't go very often. Um, yes, I do, yes, yeah. Uh, yes, but I haven't practiced it very often. Can you play the guitar? Yes, I can. Uh, I had lessons when I was at school. No, but I wish I could. No, I'm afraid not. I'm not very musical. <laughs> yes, a little bit. I can, and the bass as well. Yes. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing a shirt and jeans. Today I'm wearing a black skirt and a black and white top and I'm wearing black shoes. I'm wearing a dress and tights and trainers. Um, black jeans and a purple top, silk top and jacket. I'm wearing jeans and a shirt. Uh, I have my uh, hoodie, uh, my shoulder bag, and my pinstripe trousers. Um, right now I'm wearing, um, I think it's um, a raincoat, uh, a shirt, and a pair of blue jeans. What do you usually wear to work? I usually wear a shirt and jeans or other trousers. I usually wear black trousers and I like to wear blue and pink tops. Uh, I wear a dress and tights and trainers to work, usually too. Usually something similar to this, or like a skirt and top. And, yeah. I don't usually wear jeans to work. I often wear a skirt or um, a jumper if it's cold but today it's quite warm, so I'm wearing a shirt. Uh, well, I usually wear my pinstripe trousers and I wear a red tie and a black shirt.
This is a statue of Charlie Chaplin, the world's first international film star. Chaplin's life story starts here, in South London. Charlie Chaplin is born in Walworth, in South London. His family is very poor, but from five years old, Chaplin can act and sing very well. As a child, and then as an adult, Chaplin acts in theatres across London and around England. When he's 22, Chaplin travels to America to tour. He decides to stay and make a career in movies. At this time, cinema is new and very popular. Chaplin makes over 50 films between 1914 and 1916, and he and his character, the Little Tramp, become big stars. Chaplin now builds his own film studio so he can control his films. Now he can act, he can write scripts, he can direct films, and he can even write all the music too. Charlie Chaplin dies on Christmas Day, 1977, at his home in Switzerland. But you can still see his influence in today's movie stars. Charlie Chaplin is born in Walworth, in South London. His family is very poor, but from five years old, Chaplin can act and sing very well. At this time, cinema is new and very popular. Chaplin makes over 50 films between 1914 and 1916, 
and he and his character, the little tramp, become big stars. Now he can act, he can write scripts, he can direct films, and he can even write all the music too. Charlie Chaplin dies on Christmas Day, 1977, at his home in Switzerland. Where did you go for your last holiday? I went to Mallorca in Spain for my last holiday. Um, Greece. Uh, North Devon. I went to the west coast of Ireland. Um, Barcelona. Uh, I went to France, to Burgundy, to a place called Bon. Uh, for my last holiday, I went to Vienna. What did you do? I spent some time on the beach and I travelled around the island in a car and I visited the main town. Swam, sunbathed, ate lots of food um, with my friends. Swam in the sea, which was very cold, <laughs> and a bit of sightseeing. Um, most days we went to the beach. Um, we stayed fairly close to the city and we kind of went to the beach some days and looked around Barcelona on other days and um, eating out and everything. It was fun. I went wine tasting um, in the vineyards. What was the food like? That was good. Yeah, very good. The food in Ireland is good. It's mostly sausages and bacon and stews. Um, it was really nice. It was like paella, lots of fish, um, tapas, and yeah, I really like that kind of food and with a bit of spice as well. It was fantastic. French food's lovely, so it's good. Lovely pate and mustard. Very, very good. Schnitzel, it's a very, very nice treat. What were the people like? The people were very friendly and were very helpful. They were very friendly um, and they spoke a lot of English. Very friendly. Yes, there were nice people down there. The people were incredibly friendly. When did you leave school? Oh gosh, I left school in 1982. I left school in 1984 when I was 18. OK, so I left school in 1972 when I was 18. I was 17 and it was 1991. Uh, I left high school when I was 18, in 2002. Uh, I left school in 73 and I was 16. I was 18 and I left school two months ago. What did you do after that? I went to university. 
I studied physics. After that, I went to university for three years. I went to university in London. I went to study, uh, but uh, on a part-time basis, uh, yeah. I went to New York to music school. I went straight into employment, working at the local authority. What do you do now? I work at the university. I'm a physicist. I'm a travel writer now. I'm a quantity surveyor. I just finished a master's at Oxford in musicology and performance. I'm a pianist. I work in a housing association doing social housing. I work as an au pair in England. The city of Sydney is on the southeast coast of Australia. It's the country's biggest city, with a population of about 4 million people. It's an international city. Over half of the people who live here were born outside Australia. Sydney is sometimes called the Harbour City. It's built around a natural harbour. The city of Sydney is quite young, but the Australian Aboriginal people lived in this area for at least 30,000 years before the Europeans arrived. The first Europeans arrived in 1788, when Britain started sending criminals to the new land as a punishment. On the 26th of January, 1788, Captain Arthur Phillips arrived with 11 ships carrying over 700 British criminals. Australians celebrate this date every year with a national holiday called Australia Day. Two and a half million tourists visit Sydney every year. Many people come to visit the famous beaches and enjoy the city's exciting nightlife. It's a crowded but friendly city. Tourists also like to visit the famous Harbour Bridge and Opera House. The Harbour Bridge opened in March 1932. The bridge is just over one kilometre long. There are eight lanes of traffic, two train lines, a footpath and a cycle path. Over 160,000 vehicles travel across the bridge every day, between the centre of the city and the north shore of the harbour. Today, you can climb the 1,439 steps to the top of the bridge. The view is beautiful. In 2008, there was the first wedding at the top. A Danish architect called Jørn Utzon designed the Sydney Opera House. He won a competition to design the building. His design was amazing, but very difficult to build. When the building finally opened in October 1973, it was 10 years late and had cost 102 million Australian dollars. It was meant to cost 7 million. There are 1,000 rooms inside and more than 1 million tiles on the roof. In 2007, the United Nations chose it as a World Heritage Site, like the pyramids in Egypt and the Taj Mahal in India.
on the 26th of January 1788, Captain Arthur Phillips arrived with 11 ships carrying over 700 British criminals. Australians celebrate this date every year with a national holiday called Australia Day. Two and a half million tourists visit Sydney every year. Today, you can climb the 1,439 steps to the top of the bridge. The view is beautiful. In 2008, there was the first wedding at the top. When the building finally opened in October 1973, it was 10 years late and had cost 102 million Australian dollars. It was meant to cost 7 million. What's your favourite room in your house? My favourite room is the lounge. Favourite room would definitely be the kitchen. Our family sitting room. My bedroom. Ah, uh, the kitchen, I guess. <laughs> favourite room in my house? Um, what's well, the kitchen? I haven't got many rooms in my house, but I think my favourite room is my bedroom. Why do you like it? I like the lounge because it's very comfortable. It's the most comfortable room in the house. It's also very light and very sunny. Because everyone comes together and we talk together and, yes, it's like a family. <laughs> I like it because it's very calming and relaxing. It's uh, decorated in blues and um, Oh, there's the main reasons, really. It's, it's somewhere calm and relaxing to go. Well, most of the family life happens around the kitchen, in my family at least. My bedroom's the biggest room in the house, and I like it because it's relaxing to be there. I sleep in there. Um, I don't have a lot of things. It's just very plain. Where are you going this evening? This evening I'm going to London on the train. We're going to eat in this Chinese restaurant down the road. I'm going to play tennis with my son. This evening? Uh, I'm not going anywhere this evening, I don't think. I'm staying at home this evening. Back to London. Uh, going to go for a meal. Not too sure where yet, but we're going to choose a restaurant and go and have a nice meal somewhere.
What are you having for dinner? I think I'm going to have pasta. I think I'm going to have the chicken with lemon. I'm going to have spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, for dinner, I am having chicken. What are you doing next weekend? I'm not sure. I think I might go camping. It depends on the weather. This coming weekend, I'm going to be working on an essay I have to do for an open university course that I'm doing, which has to be in soon. So I need to spend quite a lot of time on that this weekend. This weekend, uh, decorating. There we go, how boring that will be. I'm decorating my, uh, my son's bedroom, so I'll be finishing that off. Cape Town is a beautiful city on the southwest coast of South Africa. The city is smaller than Johannesburg and Durban, but it is the oldest city in the country. It is also known as the Mother City. Cape Town is the most popular attraction for foreign visitors to South Africa. Many visitors come to see the natural beauty of Table Mountain, visit the fantastic beaches, and see the amazing wildlife. There are often too many clouds in the sky over Table Mountain, and you can't see the top. Local people call these clouds the tablecloth. But on a clear day, the views from the top of the mountain are amazing. Walking to the top is cheapest, but if that's too much exercise for you, there's a cable car too. It's an easier and quicker trip to the top. At the beaches, visitors can surf, swim, or just relax in the many cafes and restaurants. Whale watching trips are very popular. This group is going to see whales swimming in the Indian Ocean. When the weather isn't good enough to go to the beach or go whale watching, visitors can explore the city. The Victoria and Albert waterfront is one of Cape Town's modern attractions. There are new shops, restaurants, bars, and the Nelson Mandela Gateway building. These visitors are going to get a ferry to Robin Island. In the past, the island was a prison. Nelson Mandela was a prisoner on Robin Island for 18 years. The prison is now a museum. If the waterfront is too modern for you, there are a lot of older buildings to see in the city centre. This old-fashioned style of architecture comes from the first Dutch immigrants to South Africa. It is called Cape Dutch. There are a lot of other great things to see around the city. There are beautiful parks where visitors can see local wildlife, like these baboons. In the Boa Cap area, the buildings are smaller than the city centre, but they are more colourful. This area is very popular with tourists. And all around Cape Town, 
there are the amazing views of the beautiful Table Mountain. The city is smaller than Johannesburg and Durban, but it is the oldest city in the country. It is also known as the Mother City. There are often too many clouds in the sky over Table Mountain and you can't see the top. Local people call these clouds the tablecloth. In the past, the island was a prison. Nelson Mandela was a prisoner on Robben Island for 18 years. The prison is now a museum. This old-fashioned style of architecture comes from the first Dutch immigrants to South Africa. It is called Cape Dutch. <laughs> 